Elon Musk, meantime tonight, is in a battle over Trump with Jeff Bezos. Two of the world's richest men are now publicly feuding for Trump's favor. Musk posting on X, quote, I just learned tonight at Mar-a-Lago that Jeff Bezos was telling everyone that real Donald Trump would lose for sure, so they should sell all their Tesla and SpaceX stock. Bezos responding with, nope, 100% not true. Musk fired back. Well, then I stand corrected following by a uh, crying emoji, an R-O-F-L, rolling on the floor laughing emoji. Musk has been seen with Trump almost daily, of course, since Trump was elected. And joining me now is tech journalist Kara Swisher. She hosts a multitude of podcasts, has covered Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos closely for years. Yeah. It is safe to say you know more about uh, both of them than, than anyone. And, and <laughs> So um, what is behind this feud that's going on between the two of them? Well, they don't like each other. They never have. You know, this is sort of the, the great fight in tech before this. Before this happened, they're both in space. Um, and so that's where it started was this competition between SpaceX and Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin. And so they've always sort of, you know, tweaked back and forth of who the visionary is post Steve Jobs. Right. Let me just tell you, neither one of them. But, um, but they've been always trying to sort of vie for that. And mostly Jeff's been quiet, actually, comparatively. And Elon's a nonstop talker, obviously. Can't stop saying something. Right. And, in, you know, I think this is unusual that Jeff responded. Um, but he did, because they, they just don't like each other. Right. I mean, maybe it's, just, it's the person. You just can't it may be Well, not just to... that. They compete. You know, Jeff wants to really get some of these contracts, these space contracts. Elon obviously wants to dominate here and does. Right. And... And he's the one sitting next to Trump on, on every single time, right? Correct. Um, so what what is Elon, I mean, what do you think Elon is after with Trump right now? I Money, mean, you know, he is power. He wants contracts. Mm -hmm. He wants to have an input into things. He thinks he knows better. He does think, you know, at one point when I was interviewing him once, he when Tesla was in trouble a little bit, and he said, if Tesla doesn't survive, humanity dies. That's literally what he said to me. And, and he I, believes that. I thought he did. I thought it was bizarre, but it was true. And so I really think he thinks he's here. You know, some people think he he's like a video game player and he's ready player one. He, mm -hmm. Not Trump, by the way, him. And so he really thinks he's contributing by being part of this. So um, can I ask well, a couple things I want to ask you in the context of what he's going to do in the administration? I mean, who knows how long it's going to last? Who knows what he's going to do? But he said that Many he's going to be running it will. The, the Doge, um, yeah. which, of course, has the same I acronym as his crypto and um, the Department of Government Efficiency. Mm -hmm. So um, Marjorie Taylor Greene mm -hmm. and Elon Musk. Did you ever think that would be a pair? But apparently yeah. it's going to be a pair because Fox is reporting that she was just selected, Kara, to lead a House subcommittee that's going to work with... Delivering. Right. They're going to be, it's Doge. going to be the Congress part that's going to work with Doge, which means working with Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know Elon Musk pretty well. How does that, that relationship pan out? Elon Musk and Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene. I have no idea. I mean, both are very canny people. Let me tell you, Marjorie Taylor Greene, whatever you think of her, is a very She's canny a, person. Yeah. And so I don't... No, I think they're both, I don't know how they're going to vie for attention and elbow each other out of the way of the cameras. That's one issue they both have. They love being in the center of attention. Um, you know, I think the problem is, can they really pass this? Or is this a lot of jazz hands and arm waving? And we'll right. see if they're able to do so. So, you know what I find interesting on that? You know, a lot of people have a lot of admiration for Elon Musk and things he's sure, doing. And, and a lot of people look at the government. that are admirable. Right. And they look at the government and they say, okay. And I know people are, you know, putting out messages on social media about hamster projects and, you mm -hmm. know, in, 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 in Ecuador or whatever. Okay. Um, and then big ones like Medicare fraud. Right. And Elon Musk wanting to go out and use AI or whatever it is to identify and fix that is something a lot of people can get behind. Come but on. then he talks about getting rid of entire government agencies and sure. coming in and saying everybody, um, you know, essentially, you know, you could get rid of a lot of the federal government. Ro Khanna said the other day, I think Elon's going to get frustrated fairly quickly. Relatively quickly. The government's a big thing. It's not a company. Elon goes into these companies and he kicks trash cans and yells at everybody. That's by the way his style. Um, and he doesn't Literally run them. Doing that. Yes, yes. He, he doesn't run everything so well. I was talking to Neuralink people, and they're like, "We can't wait till he leaves because he's the so brain disruptive." Implant yes, it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Because, but he's you know he's great at being an entrepreneur and creating things. And one of the things he does well is disrupt and break. So he crashed. I don't know ninety rockets before he got the right one. NASA can't do that. Mm -hmm. Government can't do that. Government can't crash. Because people, it's not the same thing as running a company by fiat, which he does. And he does very well in a very aggressive way. And that's fine, but it doesn't work when it comes to government. You're always going to find the $600 toilet or the wrench that costs $1,000 that government has. That's a different issue. And I think just going in and cutting them, and that's his way, doesn't work in the public sector quite the same way it works in the private sector. Like this return to work thing is...
when he's saying, right, federal government, federal have to agent, come in. Have Most to come in. federal right. workers work at work. That, that he doesn't even note this actual statistics because, it's, again, it's a lot of hand waving and all government is bad. It's it's such a it's such a reductive way to look at a problem. And and uh, that, you know, it works in private companies where you run everything. It doesn't work in government. And, and quickly before we go, mm -hmm. how do you think the Trump-Musk relationship goes? Those are also two people who love a camera. I don't know. I think, you know, I think he, I think one thing that's going for him, he's very rich. He's the richest man in the world. And so Trump likes that. So he can hold on for a lot longer. In the end, I think they'll, it'll be like a Steve Bannon-like thing. He'll, the too much attention. And, but you never know. The money, money speaks to Donald Trump very much. And so possibly yeah. longer, but probably end in tears. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Well, Kara, thanks so much. It's great to see you. Thank you. Kara Swisher, as I said, uh, check out all of her podcasts. It's richest men publicly squabbling on social media over Donald Trump. Elon Musk tweeted, just learned tonight at Mar-a-Lago that Jeff Bezos was telling everyone that Trump would lose for sure. So they should sell all their Tesla and SpaceX stock. Bezos responded, nope, 100 percent not true. Musk's own company, X, put a content warning on it, community note, clarifying the statement. Uh, Molly Ball, this Jeff Bezos versus Elon Musk, I, I, like, especially on the space question, it's like these two billionaires like fighting with each other in public, like what? Well, they all just want to go to space, right? They are all building their, they're building their big toys, their rockets, and, uh, you know, going after each other on social media. I think uh, Elon and his persona has really showed these other billionaires how out there they can be. They can be out there in public. They can be, you know, taking shots at each other and saying what they feel like on social media. They don't have to be sort of up there in their little towers where they never talk about <laughs> <laughs>